Hi, this is Janice and this is day 42 of my 77 day video challenge. I haven't been able to upload new videos in the past week because I have been busy with some other things and some things happened unexpectedly and I didn't get the chance to update and to post new videos for my 77 day video challenge but i'm glad i'm back today i'm going to start over i'm going to continue from where i, le I left off and i'm just going to give you some updates about life family and uh, the lessons i learned from the past few days and from the experiences i've had during the past few days so let me start by saying that first of all i'm so grateful because i had the motivation to get back to this at first i was thinking should i still continue this or should I just stop it and don't continue it at all anyway nobody knows about it nobody's watching me and nobody's watching this challenge and that was what i was thinking but i went back to the why my why on how and why I started this in the first place and I was reminded that I started this because I want to improve my communication skills I want to improve my public speaking skills and I want to share my story I want to share my message to other people even if right now I don't see anyone watching my videos but I hope in the future even if nobody's watching it even if when, when i go back and uh, review these videos it will remind me of how i started how how i did my videos and how i followed through that's why i'm back and i hope i could uh, do this consistently until i finish day 77 but as much as possible i don't want to stop i may not be counting anymore but I'd like to continue doing this because I know that this would help me to become a good public sh public speaker, to be better in 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 speaking and in sharing my message and telling my story. I'm not a natural in this, but I know that with practice, with consistent practice and and the um, application of what I learned from other people that I will also be able to be good at this eventually. Another thing that I'd like to share with you is that one of my close friends has actually passed away last week. It was very unexpected. He was just 34 years old. He was working as a security officer in a subdivision. He used to be my classmate in elementary from far, 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 far away um, island, yeah, where I came from. And it was just so sad. It, it was so sad, you know, knowing that a friend who has been very supportive actually he has been a very supportive friend ever since i was in elementary ever ever since we were in elementary has always been supportive of me when i ran as um a student leader in our place he was that my number one supporter and he never left me even if some of my of our other friends left me for in exchange of money when my opponent offered money in exchange of their votes he stayed with me he supported me and he never left me so i'm just so happy with you know the mem going back and remembering the memories that we had during our childhood and um, a few years ago he also suggested that we raise funds for our basketball team so that when we have our alumni they have their their own uh, uniforms and he was the leader he was this kind of the team captain of our of the basketball team of our batch and so yeah we raised funds but we were not able to use it last year because of the pandemic we we're not able to go to our hometown so we set that amount aside and uh, we agreed that we're just going to use it when things get better and if we get the chance to go back there for our alumni and it was just so saddening that um he passed away too soon but you know everything happens for a reason we were reminded by god how short life is that we should really live our lives fully because we don't know when our time here is over 
So it was a reminder for all of us to live life according to God's will and not just to live life on our own terms. And uh, another uh, another reminder is really to to take care of ourselves. If we feel something in our bodies, we have to go to the doctor and and have it checked, have our body checked. Because that friend, he was already feeling something bad about himself. Like um, he was he wasn't feeling well, but he he was hesitant to go to the doctor because of the pandemic. He was thinking it was risky and he didn't want to go out. He didn't want to go to the doctor, but only to find out that it was already worse and he was at work and he just suddenly passed out and get comatose right there and then he was able to he, they brought him to the hospital only to pass away just a few hours later so and and i was able to talk to his mom and she said that she was able well he was she was able to talk to him the day before and he told her that he was feeling week or something and she advised her to go to the doctor and she didn't he didn't want to because he said he's okay i think he, he he thought he thought he could manage but yeah maybe it's all it's a lesson for all of us don't take our health for granted we have to to seek the advice of a professional of a doctor if something is not good something doesn't feel good especially in terms of our health because it may be too late you know like what happened to him it was too late and uh, they were not able to revive him although like what i said earlier everything happens for a reason and only god knows about our lives he knows when we're going back to him he knows when our time here on earth is uh, gonna be up and over but while we're here, we have to really take care of the body, this life that has been entrusted to us. Because when the time is right, when the time comes that we um, go back to the master, to our creator, we have to be accountable for everything that we have done while we're still here. And uh, another lesson that I learned, I was just, I, I took the lead in raising funds for him because they needed financial help, financial assistance, because that friend was the sole breadwinner and uh, provider of his family in the province. And um, since he was brought to the hospital, they incurred uh, they had to pay the family, the relatives had to pay a lot of money to get him out of the hospital and uh, for his funeral service. And because he didn't have money, he didn't have an insurance, even if, it's he, if he was a security officer, it turned out that his agency was not paying for his insurance premiums. And that's something that really saddens us also because yeah, being a security officer is an this is a higher risk kind of job and they should really have an insurance but it turned out that they were not paying his insurance and so yeah i was just thinking of giving the money that i was able to raise from friends and from our batchmates both in elementary and high school i was planning to send it online through bank transfer but i realized maybe i could also talk to his parents and be present, just be present, empathize, sympathize, because I know how hard it must have been for their family, for his mother especially, because the parent or the mother, it was just his mother and his two siblings, which he was who he was supporting in the province, and we came over to Manila to to see his remains, to see him before they cremated his remains and it was really sad because at first the hospital didn't want to to give them a chance to see him they wanted to just cremate him because of the risk of covid but they were able to convince the hospital that it wasn't a covid incident it wasn't a covid issue so they finally allowed them to 
um, to have his wake for three days so that the parents could also see him. Um, not the parents, because his, his, his dad passed away already. So it was just his mom and his brother who came here all the way from the province to see him and to take care of everything that needed to be taken care of. And so I was able to talk to them. I was able to give them some advice, some encouragement, and I'm so grateful because I was able to pray for her. Was while I was there, I gave her the money. I explained to her. I gave her the list of the people of our friends of our batchmates who were able to give financial assistance and financial help for their family, so that because uh, I don't want to take the credit. You know, it wasn't all mine. It was from my friends and from my our classmates who cared, who were concerned, who who give cash for the family of our late friend so I, I gave her the list and i asked her if i could pray for her i'm glad she said yes and i was able to pray for her i gave her some encouragement and it was just a great feeling to be a vessel of blessing blessing um vessel of hope channel of hope and blessing to other people even just through prayers and yeah, it was also kind of dangerous and risky to go to that place because knowing the pandemic, you know, nobody's safe. You can easily be affected, inflicted with the virus, especially if you're not careful, especially if you go so um, to other places. So I was very hesitant to go there, but I prayed to God and God gave me the wisdom and the leading to go there and be present and to show my support encouragement to be a blessing and to be a, a source of hope which comes from God of course and so the parents the relatives are really grateful for the help that they got from us from my friends and from my batchmates and also for for my presence for you know the effort it was a long drive going there it took us four hours going back I'm glad that we, we uh, left there early morning on actually so that we can beat the traffic. And there was no traffic. We made it in an hour. So that's how there's traffic here, especially if we go there um, during daytime. But anyway, God has arranged everything, our time. He arranged the car, arranged my, my brother's time. And so that he could drive me there and my papa also came with us because he, he is my childhood friend so we live in the same village and uh, they also wanted to to go there and to visit our relatives there in, in Cavite in that place where he was his wake was held and so it was an amazing experience and amazing reminder for all of us to really take care of ourselves to honor our bodies because it is is the temple of the holy spirit and this is only interesting to us this is not us so we have to take care of this because uh, um we we don't know when it's gonna be when when are we gonna return this body to and we don't want to return this body worn out or sickly and hopefully we can see or god will say to us that well done good and faithful servant and steward of your body of the gifts that he has interested to us anyway it's been a long testimony message for today and i just want to make up for the days that i wasn't able to publish i hope I hope it has encouraged you, it has inspired you somehow. Yeah, that's my message for today. So I hope you're well, I hope you're safe, and stay blessed. God bless you, and I pray for you. May God protect you, may God guide you in everything you do, may God prosper you. Let uh, I, I encourage you to read Deuteronomy chapter 28 because it has full of promises about the blessings that God will give to us if we continuously obey Him. God will bless everything we do. God will bless our barns, will give us a lot of blessings and abundance. I just feel so pumped up because that was the verse, that was the, the reading that I read this morning and it gave me so much hope. So again, thank you for watching. 
God bless you.